In part three of this series, we introduced capillary systems and discussed how a capillary might encourage or discourage movement of fluid within or along its length. In this final video, we'll introduce capillary force formulas to present you with the full technical description of the forces at work in a capillary system. Hi, my name is Ken Milam. I'm an application engineer here at Thermopore. Welcome back to Thermo TV. Armed with an understanding of the capillary force formula, you'll be able to predict the response of a capillary system for a host of liquid solid combinations with materials of varying pore sizes. Let's start by discussing a capillary system made from a high surface energy material. As you might recall, in the third video of the series, we discussed the fluid's movement of a glass capillary tube. But you might ask, how long will this wicking process continue? Is there no end? Well, it's a good question. So let's explore some of the forces at work in this arrangement. When a fluid wets a capillary, we know that the wall of the capillary is trying to pull the fluid over its own surface. We also know that the fluid will respond like a three-dimensional magnetic chain by pulling its neighbor, neighboring molecules along for the ride. However, if we assume the capillary is oriented in a vertical fashion, as shown in this example, then the weight of the fluid located inside the capillary gets heavier and heavier as the liquid moves up the capillary tube. Let me say this again. Provided we're talking about a vertical oriented capillary, the weight of the fluid in the capillary gets heavier and heavier as the capillary pulls the liquid up the tube. What we'll eventually find in a capillary wetted by a liquid is capillary equilibrium. At equilibrium, the upward pulling force of the capillary is equal to the downward force of the liquid's weight. The height of the capillary is referred to as the capillary height or the capillary head and it quantifies the capillary force that's acting on the system. So let's look at these two forces, the upward capillary force and the downward weight force. Let's start with the downward weight force. We'll start by calculating the capillary's volume which is equal to the capillary height times the area of the capillary which is pi times the square of the capillary's radius. To calculate the mass, we'll multiply the capillary's volume times the fluid's density. Lastly, to arrive at the column's weight, we'll multiply the mass by gravity. Okay, so that gives us the downward force component. Now remember, at equilibrium, this downward force component is balanced by an upward capillary force component, which we'll define next. The upward capillary force acting on the liquid can be represented by a line drawn through the top of the liquid surface. This line effectively represents the attractive force of the capillary acting on the liquid. The contact angle that's made between the liquid and the solid can be measured at the liquid solid gas interface. Using the contact angle, we can show the capillary's attractive force in X and Y components. We're primarily interested in the vertical or the Y component, which can be described by the cosine of the contact angle multiplied by the liquid surface tension. Okay, so that calculation gives us a unit upward force. Now, because the attractive force exists around the perimeter of the capillary, we'll need to multiply that unit upward force by the capillary circumference to obtain the capillary's total force acting in the upward direction. Setting the weight and the capillary forces equal to each other and solving for the capillary height, we get the following traditional capillary formula. So this formula predicts that the capillary height of a system will increase when one, the surface tension of the liquid increases, two, the contact angle approaches zero, three, the density of the, of the fluid decreases, and or four, the capillary's radius decreases. Now what about the other scenario whereby a fluid comes into contact with a low surface energy capillary, i.e. the liquid does not wet the capillary? In this second scenario, we know that the wall of the capillary is trying to resist the fluid's entry, but we know that an external force might enable the fluid to gain entry into the capillary. So let's see what our capillary force formula predicts in this arrangement. In this scenario, we don't have a fluid's weight as the force that counterbalances the capillary force. Instead, we might have a pressure that's acting on the fluid across the capillary's diameter. The pressure that a fluid exerts, exerts on a capillary is a function of the capillary's depth under the fluid surface. You might recall this effect in the swimming pool. As you swim deeper and deeper, the water pressure increases. By multiplying the fluid's pressure times the capillary's area, we'll derive a driving force that should be equal and opposite the resistive capillary force at equilibrium. So the external upward force will be pressure times the capillary's area. One formula for pressure 
is density times gravity times the distance that you're submerged under the fluid. The capillary's area is easily calculated by multiplying pi times the square of the radius. So if we were to submerge the tip of the capillary underwater, the inward force or the upward force exerted by the fluid under the capillary's opening will be pi times r squared times density times gravity times the capillary's height. As we did in our previous example at equilibrium, the downward capillary force acting on the liquid can be represented by a line drawn through the top of the liquid surface. The line effectively represents the repulsive force of the capillary acting on the liquid. The contact angle that is made between the liquid and the solid can be measured at the solid-liquid-gas interface. Using the contact angle, we can show that the capillaries resist the forces in X and Y components. As was the case earlier, we're primarily interested in the vertical or the Y component, which can be described as the cosine of the contact angle multiplied by the liquid surface tension. So the calculation gives us a unit downward force. Now, because the repulsive force exists around the perimeter of the capillary, again, we'll need to multiply the unit downward force by the capillary circumference to attain the capillary's total force acting in the downward direction. If we solve for H to determine the point of water entry, we'll derive the following formula. Did you notice that this capillary force equation is the same one that we derived earlier? It conveniently addresses both wetting and non-wetting capillary systems. The height will be a positive value for systems with small contact angles or wetting systems. This means that the capillary will draw fluids vertically up a capillary a distance of H. The height will be a negative value for systems with a large contact angle or non-wetting systems. This means that a capillary will resist the fluid's entry until submerged downward to a capillary distance that's equal to H. Thermopore maintains a diversified portfolio of porous materials that can help you achieve any number of hydrophilic wicking or hydrophobic venting applications. And I hope this four-part tutorial has provided you with some insight into the type of variables that we'll be able to tweak to satisfy the needs of your next development project. Stay on the lookout for additional videos by signing up for our RSS feed or as always if you have any additional questions or if there are some topics that you'd like to see added to the Thermo TV channel give us a call or drop us a line. For now I'm Ken Milam saying thanks for watching this installment of Thermo TV. We'll see you next time.